Aloha, everybody. Aloha. We will spe be speaking about pro consciousness medicine and uh, also uh, democratization of healthcare. But before we start there, okay, I come from an, an area in Canada, Quebec, which is very entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. This is very important for me because, you know, we will speak about it's not just a, a concept pro-consciousness medicine. And quantum university is not just about an idea about quantum physics and so on. The way we design our program challenge many things. Of course, we kind of a rewriting, and I said this so many times, the curriculum in medicine and natural medicine. Why? Because the, the foundation of what is teach medicine now doesn't allow all these multiple possibilities of healing. So this is one thing we challenge. Another thing we challenge is education. Because you, if you look out there now, what's happening in education, and, and look at it. You have a lot of, even now, I saw CNN and other channels, they feature the debt of student in education, one, over $1 trillion now, which is more than all the debt in credit card. Uh, this is the biggest debt now, even more than the real estate uh, one. You know, this bubble with real estate, the debt with education is even bigger. So people have started to reflect about this. And there's a, a concept in quantum university that we already, uh, that we have implanted, that we have developed now for since the beginning, is as you are a student, you can already generate some income. And they are coming now, this, now in the classical, uh, the conventional education, they said, oh, before you do your PhD, why you don't do a technique so you can already generate some income? Why I'm speaking about this today is very important. Why? Because when people knock at the door of Quantum University, and we have now hundreds every, every month, it's amazing. One of the major things that they are looking at is uh, the main objection is, oh, we don't have the money to do this. Which is when you understand the way we have designed certification program inside our curriculum, this is how we solve that. Okay, this is very important. So we would speak about bio neurofeedback, but just to start from uh, what Dr. Porter was presenting this morning. You know, the brain tap. Do you know that the brain tap is already in our curriculum now for, since almost the beginning? And many of the students have got this incredible technology as they were doing the program. And there's a, a, a huge potential with this because you can already start to set up your clinic, but you need to be certified. You cannot just go out there and now start to uh, do the the brain tap and uh, you know, present you as a professional if you don't have any credential. You understand that. But before you, you, you reach the level of doctor, PhD in integrative medicine or natural medicine, the way we have designed the curriculum, at, even at the bachelor level, we are offering the possibility of different type of certification that allow you to practice this technology with liability insurance and some level of professionalism. By example, when you end your bachelor, you will be holistic health uh, board, uh, holistic health practitioner with a specific board. And even before that, you can be certified in neurofeedback and you can be certified in biofeedback, you can be certified in pain management, in hypnotherapy and so on. So this is very important because I see sitting around, many students holding on their program and not taking advantage of this idea. So because if you take this advantage of this idea, you can already set up a little office in your, in your house and you can already start to generate some income. And as it goes, you know, your whole program is, is pay, totally pay off. This is the idea. So we have to be practical. You know, some people have more more fortunate, so less. But everybody that is really 
has really in, in his or her heart the intent to help others and heal others with this pro-consciousness medicine should join this army that we want to set up now in healthcare. Why? Because when I will speak about pro-consciousness medicine, it's totally another view to look at medicine. We, knew, we need this badly now in healthcare. So uh, since I was speaking about, uh, you know, I ref we refreshed the biofeedback course. I redone the neurofeedback heart variability, oriented with this new idea that, uh, you know, we create a new balance in, in, uh, in the healthcare where the empowerment is more on the individual than on the doctor and the system. Because at the end of the day, you understand that, you know, who healed? Consciousness healed. This entanglement between the healer and the healing. And you will realize, you know, one day you were working with this technology and years after with another, you know, they are as effective, and Dr. Mario was saying this, as much, you know, your intent is there, as much your level of knowledge is there, as much your level of awareness is there. So this is, this is I want you, you understand this uh, very well. So because I came in America years, uh, more than 15 years ago, and people ask all the time the idea, oh, I buy a device, and then that's enough. I don't need to be certified. I don't need education. I don't need credential. I'm sorry, but it doesn't work this way. It can work for a little, right? But we, if we want really to make an impact in the healthcare, we have to build a, a real standard. We have to build a real credential. This is how we will be respected. So uh, new model of bio-neurofeedback. So I speak about pro-consciousness medicine. What is pro-consciousness medicine? Yeah, no, it's quantum medicine. It's quantum integrative medicine, but it's a medicine with awareness. What we have now in conventional medicine, that's not a medicine with awareness. A medicine with awareness, first, number one, empower the individual. You know, it's, it's with information, with knowledge, one. Second, it's also a medicine of what I call full potentiality. So this is totally different. You know, if you go around and you start to look at people and what is wrong with them and, and what is the disease and when, when the, the diagnostic is done, then, you know, you, this is the whole uh, pharmaceutical arsenal or surgery and, and there is like a funnel and there is no, no other option. Not only that, the way this medicine is framed in terms of human anatomy and human biology is very limited. You get in, in a model of evolution that is deterministic, fatalistic. It's like you, you are determined by your gene. You, you cannot make any difference. You, you are locked in the box where most of the time there is a prognose and there is no way out. Then this, you understand that why healthcare is so expensive? Why in the last decade the, the, the cost has scattered, you know, uh, compared to other goods and it will just going to increase this way. So, and, but it, what is fascinating and exciting is when we're in time of crisis, this is all the time where cre creativity manifests. It's all the time when a new technology, a new way to look at things change totally the equation. And when we're speaking about making a difference in healthcare, not only in America, all over the world, you know, we are kind of serious about it. You know, and, and already, years after years, we have graduate students, and you should see, you know, what this seed of information they have received from Quantum University, what some have done. It's incredible. They have set up clinics, they have read books. You just go and see the testimony. And, and they have uh, helped others. So it's like a, 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 a multiplication factor. Uh, medicine of awareness is also medicine uh, where, where you look at the individual with other type of parameters. I spoke about this so many times. You know, we call that health parameters. 
you want to look at the individual and say, you know what, what can I be doing that, you know, will bring this individual, you know, tapping in the bioterrain, the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, that I can bring that individual at, at its full potentiality. And full potentiality is not that complicated. It's not Superman. It's an idea of integration, actually. It's an, an, idea, an idea of uh, integrate mind-body, uh, resolve conflict, reestablish the kind of flow of life in the individual when they are facing some imbalance. You know, I wear a hat <laughs> the last two, three days. <laughs> I was this guy 40 years ago. That was me. <laughs> and I done this home visit, you know, with this, you know, I tried, to, I have my, this bag in, the, in one of the storage. I cannot find it anymore, but you know, that was exactly that, okay? I would go home and I like to do it. I like to do it, why? Because you get, you, you know it really people when you go in their environment and you start to understand what they eat and what, how they interact and, one day I go in the place and, and uh, this client, I spoke about it in, the, in, in, in my book, you know, he, he, uh, he got almost resurrected from intensive care. You know, heart attack and uh, kidney failure, uh, pul emboli, pulmonary, and, and then at that time there was, you know, intention work in different kind of society and format. There was this prayer group and 40 people were together and praying for this guy. And finally, he got out of intensive care. I'll make a story short here. And then another day came to my office, and uh, uh, he has a, a, a thrombophlebitis, one leg. And one leg was just the double of the other size. I said, just go hospital. And so the guy, no, he just go back home the weekend. He said, I don't go there. And then he got another healing, uh, spiritual healing, and one after another. He was a, a miraculous, you know, diabetes. And so, but one day I go to visit him, and because, you know, his lab was still in, uh, on balance, and he was coming, the, the diabetes was coming back. So I go to see him, and we were kind of friends. Uh, he said, are you thirsty? I said, yeah. He said, why you don't go in the basement? Uh, get a, a pop, you know, a kind of uh, drink. I go there and the, I see all these crates of uh, buzz, you know, the, how can you say, the, the soda, you know. <laughs> so, of course, you know, you, you can have a, 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 an energetic healing or you can have a spiritual healing, but at the end of the, after that, you still have to behave, right? You have to correct, <laughs> you have to correct the, the habit that has created that, whatever. So, go at, and in the, this house was, a way to connect with people. But we, we were doing something very simple. They were all asked to take the blood pressure. And then you listen to the heart. And there was so much faith in that. You know, and now the whole expectation after that is, you know, this guy, you know, now we say this guy is my insurance for health. But you realize that the expectation is, was totally out of scale. And still, you know, 30, 40 years after, we still have this uh, expectation from healthcare. But this healthcare now ranked third in the cause of death. You know, we have been deceived so many times. The opioid crisis is another one. You know, you have 142 people dying a day. Uh, in a t in a three weeks, uh, the the equivalent of uh, September 11, a year, the Vietnam War, and it's in 10 years, they expect fifth, uh, half million people dying from this uh, uh, crisis, and 80% has been generated by healthcare. So it doesn't mean we cannot put in all our eggs there, but we have to start to have what we call a, a pro-consciousness medicine, a culture of health. And, and, and you are the embodiment of that. And to be the embodiment of that, we need tools too. You need tools that will, in some way, uh, uh, create this empowerment to the client. Meaning what? So the, this uh, smartphone technology, digital technology in the last uh, 
decade has changed totally uh, the, 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 the equation. Now you know you can be uh, with your smartphone at home, you can have an idea of your brain waves, of your heart variability, and, and look, there's more, more than that. You know, skin conductance, uh, blood pressure, you can monitor the sleep, you can, uh, you can uh, manage your diet, calorie, you can know how, much, how many steps you have done. Can you believe how much information we have compared to this guy 40 years ago that was just with his bag and, you know, it's, it's totally changing. So uh, just to name a few of them, you know, brain, as you said, heart, breath rhythm, sleep quality, calories counting, blah, blah, blah. It's incredible. <laughs> but you have to realize that ha the, the, the client having this in, the, in his hand now but will need kind of a doctor that is aligning with this to train and know, you know how to orient this. What I'm predicting and I think I'm not that wrong, right? Because quantum university is quite come from a, a vision that Alexei and I uh, have. And now what? We are 9,000 students. We are in uh, 80 countries. And, and it just keeps growing. So maybe we have some idea that was not too bad. But then what I predict now in the next decade, what will be the big deal? You know, because the last decade, Wellness coaching was, is came around, along with nutritional coaching, wellness coaching. That's nice, but this is even more powerful here. You will be able to be this kind of health doctor, pro-consciousness doctor, that will not only, you know, be coaching nutrition, which is good, it has to be, keep going, but also will be brain, will, will, uh, manage your, your health brain, your coherence brain, your heart, and all the other parameters. How, how do you think this cannot change an equation? Am I not the only one to see that? Not only one. I think I have a slide later. Uh, the, the smartphone technology in this, uh, in 2020, I think it's uh, 82 million of users. So that will not be decreasing. Dr. Uh, Cody yesterday was speaking about, <coughs> you know, the powerful of the, of the smartphone and how, you know, in a few years, even these uh, little gadgets will be just uh, 10, maybe 20 times stronger. So that will not be going down. It will be, and, and the smartphone, you know, I know there is good and bad with it, but I don't think uh, nobody now can <laughs> withdraw this from the market. So again, they have all the scale of the, you know, the, that you can uh, monitor. And you have to know that when I'm speaking now, it's already happening with athletes, with people that go to Olympic. How do you think they improve now this kind of 1.00 second thing? Uh, they all, all these athletes have a mental preparation. All these athletes, you know, check their heart variability when they wake up in the morning. Every day, many trainers now, what, you know what they have? They have a software. They have a software and, and, and they manage their athlete. You know, they wake up in the morning and now he, uh, Arthur or Mark and here, and they, then they, they know where they stand, you know, with their parameters. Hey, today you can go 100, 200%. Oh, today you better rest. So they are using that. They're using the heart variability, the mental preparation, they monitor sleep, they monitor all these things to bring their, to win or to win or to <laughs> improve their athlete you know, by a fraction of a second. And it works. It works. More than they are advanced with this because now there was a time, you know, the drug was the, the thing, but now it's, it's the mental performance. It's the physiological performance. You know, the whole neurofeedback get in this, in this field. So, someone has to understand. You know, I know uh, we just got excited during the Congress and then we go uh, buy the muse. It's nice, but it's for yourself. You know, if you buy a, a set up, a, a, band, a headband, one is for you. What we have to think is for our client. 
you know, we have to think how I can set up my practice, how I can now start with my clientele. They have what they call Muse Connect. In other words, they have also a software like the coach that can help you to train or improve, monitor your client at home. And you will see also in heart variability, they have the same thing. They have, I think, Elite or others, they have access also to this kind of, a, of software. So, uh, and uh, so this is why we, uh, you know, when uh, I will speak about, you know, the program we're offering, we are also integrating the, what we call the Muse Connect, the software with the promo so that you can already start your practice. So this is what I was speaking about, what they call democratization of medicine. I didn't write this article. Already some people saw this coming. They saw that, you know, uh, smartphone technology, digital technology will uh, totally uh, revolutionize. How come I don't see the other slide? The, 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 the market. And digital technology, smartphone, will be also used, both sides, you know, will be also used to, to uh, manage uh, the, the medication. You know, do, do you take your pills? How, here's your blood pressure. So that will be done both sides. But you have to realize people that scale in, in, in our rank, you know, in this uh, uh, percentage of diagnostic, it's, it's not all the population. It's just a small, it's a fraction, probably 5, 10%. Most of the people out there are in the 75% of what we call the functional disease. They go to see the doctor, and I said this so many times. The doctor do the test. If it, the doctor is nice, he calls back the client. If he's not nice, <laughs> you don't hear about it. <laughs> and then the, and the, and the philosophy, the thinking is, and if, you know what? A kid of five years old will understand that. You know, is come back when the tests are wrong enough, I can make a diagnosis. This is how this whole system of, of billions of dollars, and now we're seeking for the money how to pay for that, okay? I have, I have a news for you. I come from Canada. Universal Health Care Canada, they cannot afford it anymore either. It's not because the government pay for it that they can afford it. They cut here, they cut there, they cut there. And the beginning, they, have a, they call that universal health care. At the end of the day is, you know, that you cannot have this, you have to pay for that, and so on. In America, same thing. You know, they don't, nobody can agree now. You know? I don't go into politics, but, but the problem is, is, is not that. The problem is how we practice medicine. The problem is we have to change our mindset up. And this is why we have built this university. We have built this university because we have to change the curriculum, how doctors are trained and educated. You have this curriculum in your hands. Now you are exposed, at, you know, of this breath think, uh, think, uh, thinker like the Bruce Lipton who challenged uh, new biology and, and Dr. Goswami who introduced the, what we call the gift of quantum physics in, in medicine. You have uh, uh, this Dr. Dispenza, who is one of the, I will say, superstar now in neuroscience and neuroplasticity. You know, you have all the leaders that are redefining in that, at, at this time, medicine. This, this is what we have implemented in the system. So, but this mind of setup, you know, you, uh, you have now to carry on, of course, in your, in your practice. So, uh, smartphone technology, as I said, uh, would be a game changer if we exploit it with this awareness that I'm speaking about. If we exploit it the other way around, and it's already starting, because it's, it's like people know that they can build some code and can use this, and, you know, but you know, we have to go in the other way. So... Uh, 2020, 78 million. I said 82, I have to correct that. People will be using this kind of smartphone. This, so this is not going, it's not going the other sense. And you will be the doctor specialized with this pro-consciousness medicine, certified 
in neurofeedback, in biofeedback, in pain management, and so on, that will be look as you know, professional uh, representing this type of medicine. You know, uh, we have healthcare in that uh, quantum university. And I have a message the other day from Kaiser. And the, you know what was saying the message? Uh, today we have, uh, we are offering wellness coach. And they are all starting to do this. Do you realize that? But this wellness coach that, uh, you know, that they are implementing now in, in a system like Kaiser and probably uh, Kaiser and others, you know, uh, you will be, you will be the doctor tomorrow that will doing this work because you will know more because this wellness coach now they have been trained, you know, wellness being, nutrition, which is good. But the next decade is about that. You will be the one who implement, you know, neurofeedback in the clinic. You will be the one that manages people or you do it in the healthcare or you do it in your own clinic. Does it make sense? Are you excited about it? <laughs> Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? You know me, when I saw this, you know, the last year, because we were like, you know, we, we, we set up a neurofeedback course previously. We set up biofeedback course. But every, the field all the time changed. You know, I went out there and tried to look at what, what it's doing. But, but then I saw there is two roads that you can go. You can go that path. It's okay. Where you will practice, you know, under licensed professional, and then uh, you will be uh, having very sophisticated equipment, and then you will be more treating condition. You have to realize there is two paths here. Because when you come with a, a, a medical condition, you don't, don't forget that most in most country and state, if you say, oh, you know what, I'm treating that. You know, you, if you don't have a license, you can be kind of in trouble. But now, what is the other option now for people who want to take advantage of bio and neurofeedback? This is what we call training. The next slide. Uh, it means it, you are a trainer. You are a specialist of the brain and health coherence. You, you are someone who is looking to improve the performance so you're, you have to retranslate this in another wording. Do we know need diagnostic? Not really. If you want to improve the general health of a population, sometimes the diagnostic, I'm not saying doesn't help. You need it when people are really, are really sick. I'm a medical doctor. I practice medicine, Alexis said 15, but it's almost 25 years. So I know what it is, but most of the time, to address this 75, 80% of people that have not diagnosed yet and they don't feel well and they, and they want to do things that they're not waiting to be diagnosed. They want to reverse the clock. They want to bring back the balance. They want to wake up in the morning and they don't feel in pain. They have a, a brain that is clear, focus. They, full, they, they feel at their full you know, potential. They age and don't, don't think their brain is shrinking and you now they can learn anymore and so on. They cannot do, they don't hike this mountain or, you know, swim in the ocean and, you know, you don't want that, right? So you won't do things that, you know, carry you in this uh, old age and be at your best. And it's possible. And we, we have testimony of this today. You see people now eight years old and they claim Everest and, you know, and it's, it's amazing. Write books and challenge everything and they say, oh, wow, what's, what's happened, you know? They are still alert. And so two doctors that we will see in the future. One is Dr. <laughs> this guy. He a, was a pro-consciousness doctor. And now I put in his hand this uh, iPhone, okay? <laughs> you are this doctor, okay? You are pro-consciousness doctor. You are quantum integrative doctor. You have the awareness of that. And now you have the guy here. You know, this is the guy you saw, the, the picture a few years, uh, you know, with the bag. Now he's older. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, and then, but we still need we still to need to work hand in hand with integrative medicine because people need this extreme ex healthcare sometimes. You know, doesn't mean we don't need sometimes surgery. We don't need extreme healthcare. When I was doing my practice in Canada, okay, I'll give you the story short. You know, after seven eight years to practice medicine, you become either a businessman, or you start to dig in, in medicine. Why? Because you start to see the limit. You know, I, have, I was in the country, I had everything. Kids with otitis, and, and, and uh, in the winter, they will every year come back, and now you have to prescribe two, three times in the a, in a winter antibiotics. You know, you get sick of it, okay? And then you have these people with hypoglycemia and fibromyalgia, and depression and, and the chronic thing. And, and here you are with your symptomatic tools. So either you start, start to think, this is what I've done, or you just, you know, just do medicine, but don't put your heart, and then you become kind of a business, whatever. I don't want to speak about it. So you have very good doctors too. But, you know, then I start to look at something else. Then I found homeopathy that was kind of given as much result than antibiotics. So like you, some people start here, and some are more advanced. They're already doctors. We have, I have many doctors here in the room, but some not. And, and when I started as to practice uh, this alternative medicine, I was just dealing with few kind of indication, like you will do if you are at the bachelor level. So I start to deal uh, with this kid, you know, with a, a recurrent infection, smoking, and weight loss. And I was working, I had a program with the auriculotherapy. This is why I asked uh, uh, Vienna to, to spoke about this, because, you know, you, have, you can have approach very uh, effective with this. And then as I was becoming an, a licensed acupuncturist and a, a board-certified homeopath and naturopath, then, of course, down the road, six, seven, eight years later, I could address everything with natural medicine. 95% of the, the solution I will have for my client that will come to me was not anymore medical. Can you believe that? And they would come with all kinds of problems. Five, 10% of cases I will use still medicine. So that gives you an idea of how powerful uh, the tool you have in your hands. So let's go back here to this. This is the team of the future. This is the new balance that I'm speaking about. You know, this doctor will team with the client. So it's not anymore an equation where you have the guy there, omnipotent, that maybe know everything but doesn't know that much. And then you have this extreme expectation. Now we create a balance where this client is also empowered with you know, parameters. He can start to change the lifestyle and the way he thinks. And, and this is what is neuroplasticity. The big challenge in medicine is to change your belief system, the way you think. It works as, as long as you're not sick, it's OK. But you, you start to have a, a psychosomatic disease, or you start to have a, a chronic disease, yeah, no, now it's not anymore. Okay, you have something to change. Either diet, nutrition, the way you think, whatever. You, you understand. You already study that. But we need tools to anchor this. You know, we cannot just speak about pro-consciousness medicine. We need w ways to really uh, be able to, uh, to make that difference. So, uh, so we, what we work this weekend, uh, this workshop, we spoke about the brain coherence, we spoke about the heart coherence, we speak about pain management, and, uh, and uh, this is uh, what I would more like to uh, insist now, like you have to focus on these two things. And, uh, and again, uh, you know, how did you like the, the muse, by the way? How do you like this kind of technology? Okay? There is a potential there. And I was excited yesterday, when, yesterday or two days ago, when Dr. Cody came and he said, 
you know what, this is the first time we're doing this. So can you believe that? You know, we're all the time a step ahead. And, and, and the bio and neurofeedback program we designed is also a step ahead. Why? Because now we are also making a room for people to practice that with not necessarily a license. But at least you need to be certified. Though. You cannot just go in the field and say, you know, it's so easy, everybody can do it. And then the other thing you have to understand, uh, yes, there is many uh, headband, he spoke about it, but the Muse has also a software where you can manage your client. You're, are you aware of that? This is what we call Muse Connect, and it's just coming out. And this software will allow a trainer to handle like 50 people at a time. That's not bad, right? So hardcore errands uh, training is not easy and uh, can be effective with the supervision of a pro-consciousness doctor. So it's like a team. Of course, uh, you know, uh, people can just download the apps, but there is also a need for people to train them. We have trained you this during these uh, three, day, three, four days. And then not only that, you may know this now, and you may not practice it, okay? As I said uh, previously, one who raised the hand, he said, yeah, every day I, I go, I walk with this uh, specialist, the cardiologist, and they all know about heart variability, but they don't practice it. And, and, and the idea also is to build a relationship with the client. It's not to make them dependent of, of, of tool and technology. It's to build them the confidence. But who has a clue? you know, of this zone that we're speaking about where the heart variability is at its optimum or the, or the meditation is working. I know, I meditate for years. And then the only feedback you have is, you know, the, how you feel, which is most of them go like this, you know, and then some morning you have good meditation, bad meditation. So to build this kind of confidence and, go, and start to go deeper and deeper in this experience because now we know with research that after years of meditation, there's a lot of benefit that these people get. You know, anti-aging and they reverse disease and so on. There's many, many benefits so that I'm not getting people that are just in the surface. Hey. So uh, we, the, the, the program we design, we have the biofeedback, okay? This is many, how many of you are already in the program? More than that. Student in university. Oh. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> so meaning that you already have the biofeedback, okay? So we update this course, you know, it's already there. And then, but we didn't have the heart variability, so we had another extension to heart variability. And uh, two, three, two years ago, we had a neurofeedback program, but the neurofeedback program, the way it was designed, it was more like in term uh, specialized, you know, working with uh, uh, more uh, sophisticated device, like explained Dr. Cody, you know, the brain master with uh, 32 electrode. And so we found that after a time that very few of our practitioners will afford that. And then, so, so why go in that direction? So what we re redesigned is a neurofeedback course where that opened the door to the practice of neurofeedback without a license. But you need to be certified, you know? It's not a joke. You have to, when you go out there and look like really professional and serious, you know, you need these credentials. And I can see the difference after years. I remember uh, when we, I came in America, uh, people will do uh, what we call the quantum biofeedback. And they will say, you know what? I don't need to be certified. I don't need to be, uh, I don't need credential. Today, this practitioner, the, the equipment is in uh, storage somewhere. But I said, what you have to do, you have to build your credential. It's not just the credential, it's the confidence. It's the awareness, it's the understanding. It's like a doctor who go in medical school. It's, you know, the curriculum has to be expanded. You know, but why it takes six, seven, 
12 years if you are a specialist, you know, to be out there and, and be addressing because you have to, you need a greater awareness of what you are doing. You need more skill. You need to understand the whole picture, you know, because you will have to deal with the different type of situation. So one component of the program we have created make a lot of place to Dr. Joe Dispenza. Why? Because you can go in different direction like neurofeedback. I went on workshop too. There's many ways you can go. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to understand this idea of neuroplasticity, recreate a new brain circuit, change you know, these uh, feeling, emotion, and belief system that are tied with your way to create your imbalance. And you are a practitioner, you understand what I'm speaking about. So if you start to work in biofeedback and you don't have this kind of neuroplasticity background and all this idea of consciousness that go within, now you, be, you become just a, a technician. You know, you will, go, you will go as far with your client that is your level of understanding. This is why I add this part of this neurobiofeedback program certification. Because all along the course, we refer to quantum physics, to consciousness. We refer to uh, a notion of uh, neuroplasticity. And it changed totally the, the, the vision of this course. It's much way more original. I don't think there is an existing neurofeedback program designed this way. And then we have also include uh, the neuroanatomy with uh, videos, you know, with the team here, and Richard is uh, the author of this video. So we make this neuroanatomy very visual. This is how I should have learned neuroanatomy when I was in medical school. You know, you learn anatomy with a, a black and white, you know, book, textbook where you try to figure out the thalamus and hypothalamus. And now, now we have visual, we have video where we see all these parts, you know, integrating together. Dr. Uh, uh, Cody yesterday was speaking about, you know, the lane beak and, and, and the cortex and the, the reptilian brain. So we go, we explore this because, it's, you know, we have to be specialists. We have to understand consciousness, but we, we have also to understand what is you know, the, the, the material aspect, the constituent that collapse what is consciousness and what are the different parts of the brain and what, how PTSD uh, is generated. And, uh, you know, you have to, we have to learn about the agmedula, ag, agmedal and, uh, and, then, and then also I integrate in the course some of the notion that come from ancient system of healing. You know, when you speak about the pineal, you, when you speak about the thalamic gate, when you speak about the, the, the reticular formation, which is like an antenna, you know, then when you are in meditation, cap, you know, these feel around. You know, that add another layer of the understanding to this notion of neurofeedback. For people who are more advanced and do meditation, they have to understand that. They have to understand the, the, the thalamic gate and all this structure in the brain that are there to uh, guide us to a, a, a broader uh, consciousness uh, experience. Uh, meditation is a way to, uh, in some way, hijack the brain. Because meditators, more and more, and they go in these deep uh, uh, states of uh, meditation, they produce this neurotransmitter that, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Porter was speaking about serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. And in the ancient uh, texts, they were, call, they were uh, calling that, they were uh, speaking about this like they, were, they had a term for that, was the, the soma, was like kind of this precious juice that you can generate from within. But today we have a scientific language to speak about it. This is these dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin, this bonding hormone and so on that they were speaking about. That, if you, that if you practice meditation day after day, start to change your physiology. You know, start to, to, to transmit in some way 
you know, your, your uh, uh, materialistic uh, physiology to something that is more uh, uh, defined as a state of bliss. You know, in the, in the, the energetic anatomy we're speaking about, there is the, the physical body and then the, the vital and then the mental and then the supramental. Meditation is about the bliss one. And we don't call that bliss because, you know, we call it bliss because it's bliss. <laughs> That's really bliss. And you start to experience this through and how you can get there. And of course, it, the, the, the neurofeedback, the feedback helps to go there because then you can adjust, tune, and see what your experience is doing is, is in the good direction. So brain neuroplasticity, how many of you have already done that course? You see? Do you like it? Is it a must? It's absolutely a must. So the good news, if you have already done this course, you know, if you want to be certified neurofeedback, you know, we get it, you get a discount. If, if you've already done the, we already in the program, if you want to be certified and you've already done the biofeedback, you, have, you get a discount. If, if you already bought the Muse, which is good, you know, I don't know if you already bought it and you try it, now you can upgrade to the, the, the Muse Connect and, uh, and then you get also a discount. So we made our uh, kind of a program for the, the Congress uh, more affordable. Why? Because we want to have out there a lot of people implementing this. And I will, I will explain to you also at the end why where I'm going with this too. So uh, heart variability. Uh, part of this heart variability, we have video and course with uh, uh, Roland uh, McCready, uh, who is probably one of the head of this heart mat. And uh, they, uh, you know, heart mat has, has done a totally an incredible work in the last decade to bring the, the importance, and not only that, to bring people to practice these, these modalities. And uh, here as I just go briefly, because we speak about this before, but how, you know, what is the benefit we're looking for? You know, when we say heart variability and meditation and so on, th this is so uh, beneficial that when, you know, wellness, wellness uh, healthcare start to implement this, they will see a shift, you know, in the difference of people, long, middle term, long term, in their consumption of medication. So today we look at low heart variability as a risk factor. This is how important it is. So that's big. You know, when you speak about a risk factor for coronary disease, wow. This is the number one killer, you know, in, in America, probably worldwide. And here, you know, the benefits are endless. You know, greater sense of well-being. What? Because you understand now, we, we start to unleash this parasympathetic system. We, we start to, you know, take advantage of this parasympathetic that create this mode of relaxation within. We start to, you know, st strip the plasticity of the the heart, you know, meaning that we will have much more resilience, much more capacity of adaptation, and also has an effect on the brain, how you think. And this is the short video we have seen, because you have all these afferent uh, that go back to the brain and, and give this sense of, of well-being. You know, now we're speaking the heart in terms of, you know, a second brain, as the gut is probably the third, and here you have, you know, if you do meditation, the, the first one. So Muse again, and, uh, but Muse Connect. If you are a practitioner, you know, the step is really to have the possibility to, to, to manage your client. And, it, and you look at this, you're just working in the quantum university. And now after a few months, you can already be certified you know, with bio neurofeedback. You can already build this kind of relation with your client where you're teaching this modality. That's, that's incredible. And uh, this is my result, by the way. 
when I practice uh, full consciousness meditation. So I was doing 20 minutes twice a day. So except one day. But of course, when you know more about meditation, you can hit these birds, you know. <laughs> And where I meditate, I know there is already, I hear birds already, so they mix with the other birds. And, <laughs> and, then, and then by looking for recovery, but, you know, how many are recovery? I don't know. So, but of course, you build, you build your confidence. So, poor consciousness meditation, maybe you already have it, you don't have it. Uh, we will make also some, uh, you know, something you, you should add. Because I'm adding some really uh, uh, light, uh, you know, how to practice meditation. You don't have to implement the whole thing, but you should know the science of how to use mantra. You should, you should know the science of breathing. You should know, you know, how to surround with yourself with an energetic environment. And tomorrow we will, uh, we will, uh, we will experience that too. And here, you, you saw this video. This guy, there is all the time the first one, right, to walk on the moon. He's the first one who walk on the moon. He's a psychologist, and he's already doing this Muse Connect. And he said, you know what, my friend, other psychologic, psychologue, you know, in ten years, if you don't jump here, you will be, <laughs> you will be uh, far, far behind. So, and uh, so this is why this, uh, I was surprised that Cody brought back this video, but it's part also of, the, of your curriculum. You have the whole, the whole video here. So meaning that when, walk, when one has walked on the moon, you can all walk on the moon, right? It's all possible for everybody. So now you look at uh, three minutes left. Okay. So all the you already know this. You know this. It's endless. The benefit of meditation. It's it's probably the less. The the most. Developed the most potential placebo on earth. On earth, it's meditation. There is no more. There is none placebo that does all this. It's impossible. You reach all the the level of mind body. Uh, yeah, no, uh, performance, uh, you, you, all, you heard about it. It's a back up by your research, uh, by the way. Yeah, no, it's, uh, this is out of stats. 55% left cancer, 50% less illness, 87% uh, heart disease. Yeah, no, you, can, you cannot have uh, better than that. So brain heart coherence. And what I'm speaking about, you know, <laughs> I try it. I don't like to, to come here and just theories, you know. I am a guy, I told you, I come from a place, this kind of called Labos. These people are practical, but we have ideas too, okay? But it has to be something. So, of course, it was interesting to, to have these, you know, experience. And this is where I check if my meditation was working, okay? And this is where, you know... Uh, when, one seminar, I got this kind of result, you know, kind of crazy result when you have all your brain in coherence or gamma waves and, and you are in this main, uh, uh, main set where you have an altered state of consciousness. So and again, Muse too, and then I done the same thing with hard maths too, you know. So when I meditate or when I'm working, you know, I was monitoring myself to see if I was in the coherent state or not. And here is the curriculum that uh, we're speaking about. So you don't look at this price now, OK? Because we have revised that. But you have uh, three possibilities. But the, the Nosphere slide I want to finish with, it because you know it's, it's, it's the next step. Who heard about the Nosphere project? Yeah. Awesome. Wow, OK. Now what I want. You know, I want to have capt more captains. We have captains this weekend, right? Yeah. So people that will be certified by neurofeedback, you know, I, want, I will invite them to be captain because these people will be hooked with 50 clients that will be practicing meditation. Of course, it's kind of a voluntary base, but they can join. They can join 
the North Sphere project. So think about it. You know, we are 10 people here doing this neurofeedback with the Muse Connect, or we have 50 people, and then these 50 people has 50 people that are doing meditation. So now we have a way to create a community of people that generate brain coherence. HeartMath has done this with their software. But me, I want to extend this to the North Sphere project. Okay? So the P we will have the North Sphere project speak a little bit about tomorrow. The idea at the end is to create this kind of consciousness accelerator. We know that if we are many people meditating, consciousness change. You know, there is more uh, in it. And, and do we need that coherence today? Yes. Hello. Yes. Do we need that? Yes. You know, we have to create a balance, no? Because, you know, you have all the time people, you know, kind of chaotic and they go and they do crazy thing. But, but we have to balance that. And this is the idea. This was the idea of Project Nosfer. And since a year and a half now, 60,000 people has visited our website. And, and we have people that... <laughs> they are meeting, they, they come every day. And I go there me and myself every day. Uh, and we have uh, between 50 and 100. But now, think about now if we have kept 10, that, you know, 10 that bring 500 people. Or we have hundreds that take that bring its potential. And then and the fact that we have this feedback now create this more tangible uh, effect of community. Because most of the time it's like we're sitting, is it working, is it? Now we have kind of a, a feedback of a collectivity, okay? Blowing the effects of math meditation. So, you know, it's, it's one drop at a time, right? We're like a little drop. But it's amazing, you know, when you start to create the coherence together. And, and how many from, we have people here from all the continent, Africa, South America, Europe, Slovenia, Russia, England. I probably forget some of them. I forget the Canadian. Australia. Hey, who else? England. India. So can you believe that all these little drop everywhere here and this, this number grow? And then not only that, you know, that helps you as also as a practitioner. You know when, when you're alone and you have to see 10, 20 clients a day or a week or 100 a week, you need to be a resource, right? You're probably the first one that needs to, to be connect with others. This is another reason why I create this. Heal yourself, heal others. Because you can also uh, go there every morning. I go there every morning. And it's, I like it. Why? Because now I'm not alone. I'm not sitting alone just on my, you know, lanai looking at the bay, Kaneohe Bay. I'm sitting with hundreds of people. That's not me. Okay.